Hi, I'm Bevan Bodron and welcome to Extra Time. I ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Joining me today with Jane and Mr Briggs is all-star winner, Neve Rocket. Welcome back. Thanks, lads. So, how has last week been? Yeah, Jesus, I'm still, I'm still in shock, I think, with it. I was bombarded with messages and, uh, and well-wishers, so uh, I couldn't believe it myself. There was um, lots of celebrations in our house. When they named the half back line, I didn't think I was going to get it, and there was just silence in the room then. Uh, all my family were there looking at me, waiting, like, and they were like, no pressure, or anything like that, because they didn't know what nominations or anything. So uh, when I named the half back line, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to get one, lads. And they were just silent, they weren't saying anything. So uh, when my name was announced, then everyone has gone crazy. The dog was thrown up near and everything, so it was great crack. And was it always your goal to win an All-Star? Uh, it wasn't really my goal. I, I did a leadership course in um, Maynooth there. I, I got a scholarship with it with the GPA and um, it's a leadership course that I did and I got a life coach with that and um, we got one for the year and she kind of just said goal setting with me and she actually put it on my sheet there a couple of years ago. She said, why don't you put down getting an all-star on your, on your goals or your, your list of uh, aspirations? And I put it down and I said, yeah, I didn't really think much of it. But um, um, then every year it was like, oh, no, I didn't get that goal. But it didn't, didn't really bother me that much. So still, I think I was in shock. I can't really believe it myself that I have it. I think when the when the trophy comes out in the post there this week at some stage, that it'll kind of settle home to me then. Do you think winning the North Star is going to boost like next season's game? Yeah, look... Um, I suppose, like likes of Lorreen Bray and Beth Carton, who have got all stars already, you know, um, it's kind of Waterford Camogie's growing. And I suppose uh, when we, if we can just kind of go past this quarter final stage, um, then everyone will see, or the rest of the country will see how good the players are. Like, we're only three players on that have gotten all stars from the, from the team, but there's any, any one of the girls could have gotten all stars from the team, to be honest with you. They're a super bunch and they're a group of great players. So, I'd be just hoping that we could just push on further in the quarterfinals just so that the other girls could be showcased just to see how good they are and see how good of a team that we are. And uh, Neve, I actually read last week, uh, just just a couple of days actually before you got the All-Star, that in for the men's, uh, there's been 150 Waterford All-Stars handed out, say, I think since 1970. And it's actually way down the list on most counties. Now, if you look at the Camogie, like you just said there, you have Lorraine Bray, Beck Carton, and you. So like, something like, has that played on your mind? That like, it's not just an all-star, it's actually, it's something very, very special. Yeah, I suppose, um, not really for me, like as a, I suppose my confidence my, or myself, I haven't really thought it as a person actually. I think in years to come, I look back and I, I think it will be a, a good experience for me. From For me, I look back and I'll be glad of it. But I think, um, for my family, I really think, and my friends, like, I think they've really, they can see it. I think I'm still in a bit of shock, like, you know, I can't really believe it. And my family and my friends are just so happy for me. Like, I've never seen my father so proud. Like, it was like his goal. He actually said to me on the night, like, it was his goal to ever win an All-Star and get on that. And he, was, he wasn't he was good enough. So then it was kind of like his mission to push me to get to get that far. Um, or my, and my brother as well, like, who played with Mr. Briggs there uh, a couple of years ago for the football. So... Um, it was it was always his goal, and I suppose just seeing how proud it makes my family is just really, really what makes it really special. I suppose they've kind of backed me and supported me all the way, brought me to the physios and the doctors and stuff like that. So uh, it's a, it's nearly like a, a an achievement for them as well, definitely. Um, people feel like you should have won one last year. Where was that disappointing, or did you not really think about it? Um, it, it's only kind of disappointing when, uh, like, I don't ever really expect anything like that myself. Like, I never really expect to win anything individually. I never expect to win an All Star. It's only when people would say it to you that you're like, it kind of goes into the back of your head, and then you're embarrassed that you didn't get one. N more so than disappointing for yourself, you're kind of like, oh Jesus, like everyone's expecting me to get one, and that you're you're kind of not good enough to get one. You know. Uh, as opposed to I'd never would have dreamed of getting an all-star myself and when I got one this year I'm like I just it's a bit surreal but uh, it's nearly as embarrassing when people are like oh you got nominated and or 
they'd say, geez, you should have got one last year. And it's like, um, yeah, it's kind of like you kind of put your head in the sand and you don't really want to hear because you're like, I, I don't know what, I never thought I would, I would be good enough for it, you know? Do you think this is going to inspire anyone else on the panel? Um, yeah, like, look, the girls, like any of the players, they were the first people to text me, like, you know, and Snapchat me and uh, Aoife Fitzgerald was messing. I was on a Zoom call there. If Derek is listening to this now, I was on a Zoom call there the other day and I had, um, I was after getting uh, Capri Suns, uh, I was after drinking Capri Suns, but instead of putting it on the chat in the Zoom call, I sent it to everyone. Instead of just sending it to Lorraine Bray, Lorraine Bray was laughing at me, she goes, oh, how's it going? And then instead of getting it in the chat, I, uh, I actually sent it to everyone and then everyone was like, laughing at me saying she's in rockets flat out in Capri Suns so I got a, a post to Capri Suns there today off Aoife Fitz <laughs> missing so uh, I look I was delighted with it and um, hopefully I don't I don't really think that the girls like they're so good themselves like they don't need to be looking up to me they don't need to be looking up to better Lorraine like they they're just phenomenal players themselves you know and I hope that they'll kind of um, that I just hope that we get to a, a better stage that people can see how good that they are and Eva, I, I suppose I, I had a go, I was thinking about it last week, just when you know when you got the all star that it's not just as simple as like, I was thinking about role models and especially for the girls here, but like when you were growing up, I remember like when you were younger than them, and I suppose you probably were look you looked up to you know likes of you know you had Karen Kelly and you had Pauline Cunningham and you had Jenny Simpson and Trish Jackman, and they were I suppose they're probably your heroes, and Waterford were junior hurling. And when I look, I, I suppose I would have followed your career, having taught you as well and been lucky enough to coach you. You have a junior All-Ireland medal. You have an intermediate All-Ireland medal. You have been in All-Ireland finals with St. Anne's. And now you have an All-Star. You have literally surpassed. You, you aren't as good at it. You've, you've surpassed all of your heroes. Like, that does make a difference for the next generation because the glass ceiling, if you know what I mean, is broken. And there yeah. is no limit, like there is no limit to what Waterford Camogie can achieve as opposed to when you started when we were just junior, not just junior, but you know what I mean? Like that that surely is going to make a huge difference. Not just, you know, you, Beth, Lorraine Bray and all these players going forward in the future. Yeah, look, I, I do think that um, it's great. And I suppose when you get the, the well wishes and messages, like, you know, or that people might be writing to and saying, Jeez, you really inspired me or that your your daughters are just mad to just go around and puck around with you. Like, you know, it's it's it is a bit mad like that, you know. I I feel I suppose I don't know, I just wouldn't really see myself as someone like that. Um as a role model for someone else. Like, you know, I I'd be kinda I, I just wouldn't see myself as that. But definitely I suppose seeing how much Walter Kamogi has progressed, what would make me really happy is there's just pushing it on again, you know, and that like more girls stay and more girls play it. Like when I was playing, it was it, like we even played in the school, like we were only kind of, we were, we were like the lowest of the lowest league, like it was only a, just started off the Camogie and then we worked the way up, like, and I suppose that's the way it is in the war for Camogie as well. And what would make me happy is just seeing, seeing like more girls play and more girls involved and more girls staying active and being able to play this thing. Um, you have a new management team. How have you found the change? Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, Derek is very, very positive. We're training probably five or six days of the week, um, running and gym work. So it is very, very good. And I suppose um, just eager to get on the pitch now at the moment and eager to kind of get playing with each other. We were talking talking about it today. It's very, very hard when you're going to team sport and you're training individually, you know. Because I suppose the reason you're in team sports is that you train with other people and and the camaraderie of it. So when you're training on your own, it's kind of a bit different. It's like you're in an individual sport. So I think everyone's looking back, to, looking forward to getting back to to in April, hopefully that we get back to pitches. Do you think that the starting team is going to change much with the new management? Yeah, um, it's hard. It's hard to know. I'd say that. Um, Derek, you'd have to really earn your place, like, and that's a good thing to have on a team, like, you know, there'd be no names, there'd be no egos, there'd be nothing involved in that, there'd be no such thing as, I have played here last year and I, I deserve my place, everyone will have to earn it, it'll be like a clean slate, like, you know, and I suppose that's good, it's, it's, uh, it's good in one sense, I know we're kind of missing the continuum of having a manager from year to year, but it's good that it's a new year and everyone can start afresh again. 
And uh, me, just, just picking back up on something you said there, because I actually have it written in front of me here. Um, I know your father, a long time, I suppose, have, like having played football with your brother as well. And I know how passionate he is about the GA. And I, I've no doubt that like the whole family were just delighted for you. But I'd say, your father, I'd say, it doesn't take much to drive him to tears, I'd say, but like, he must have been so proud. Yeah, definitely. Sure, he was ringing me the night before. Well, did you hear anything, any word? And I goes, no, I didn't hear it. Like, this is like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the night time. And the next morning, he was, ne- he was nearly more nervous for me. He's always at all my matches. He's always at my games. Like, you know, he's the first person to ring me up. Um, he's the first person to stand up for me, I suppose, in the match as well, nearly. Um, I was laughing when they, we were playing the St. Anne's in Dollar Ireland. Uh, the referee kind of didn't do us justice in one of the final final whistles we lost by a point but it was up in Ashburn and my brother as you know Shane and uh, my father were there but uh, they decided they were going to go after the referee and question the referee after the game but uh, they hopped the fence outside on the outside which was surround the pitch but Eddie was in such a temper so mad like I was crying on the ground obviously devastated after all Ireland and my father was so mad and so angry he went to take a run but slipped on the grass and I was just on the ground crying. <laughs> then I saw this lunatic running for the referee and my other brother run for the referee. And I just go, oh my God, so you'll always, you'll always have your back uh, no matter what, you know. So, um, well, there's two men I would not like chasing me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't like them, but they've chased me enough as well. Uh, he was saying me, he was telling me actually as well when I, when I was younger, he used to always, they used to always put me through my paces. There was no such thing as being a girl out on the lawn, like Edmund had flattened you. Or my father would flatten you. I got stitches out in the lawn, just poking around out in the lawn. So uh, I think uh, he's really, really proud. And I suppose um, he's delighted. I think he's just over the room one. I don't think he's actually after realising it himself. Um, how did you feel after seeing the support from everyone on social media, on um, things like Facebook and Instagram? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like, Jesus, like, I actually only started, I only got back to people like, probably the last two days because there's just been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages like you know I actually couldn't even go through them uh so many people saying nice things like you know and like other players from other counties like texting me and uh people from college people from school friends you know there's so many people that I wish you well and say you deserve it like you know uh it, it still doesn't play into my ear because I'm kind of like I still can't believe it but it's complete I was completely in shock seeing how many people were wishing you well and just we're so glad for you and so happy for me. Like, you know, that was really something that I'll always remember and hold fondly. Like, you know, that so many people wished you well. Like, it was, no one begrudged you or anything, you know? Was it disappointing that there was no awards night out with the All-Stars? Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, I suppose more so for my family. They'd be big, big party goers. So um, I think they're going to try to organise some sort of when restrictions lift. They won't do them to just have a have a couple of drinks. I think they're going to try organise a marquee at a house or something like that, you know. Anything for a party, they, they do. So, um, uh, yeah, it was disappointing to get the dressing up and the, getting the glad rags on and getting your picture with the um, with the cup. But I suppose I had all my close family around me at the, at the time when I was announced and that was really special to have them there and just celebrate there together. And uh, I know we'll celebrate with aunts and uncles and friends Um hopefully soon we'll, we'll do some sort of celebration for it. Um, one of the things that I noticed about playing a lot of years of Inter-County was that, you know, people often look at players as kind of robots that just turn up and they go out and they play. But like, I suppose you coming back to school here as well and kind of being happy in your professional life, being happy in your personal life, those things all play, they definitely all play into performance on the field. And like, I suppose... Would that have made a small bit of a difference to you now this? You're probably less travelling up to Blackwater and, you know, you're kind of comfortable in your job, you're happy, and then you just go out and play because, you're, you know, you're a lot more confident in your normal life. Yeah, definitely. I suppose you have to have a balance, like, you know, and having the balance of uh, being able to play, having people around you, supports around you, not having to travel as much, you know, that, that would have been a, a bit of a strain for me when you're going up to the other side of the county, like, you know. And... Um, um, that was very very tough going but um, no like I was delighted like I was I suppose having those people around you and like minded people like I always say you have to surround yourself with positive people because you're going to surround yourself with negative people 
it's a, it's going to be a lot tougher. And I, I suppose it's developing relationships with the managers. Like I probably would have been lacking a bit of confidence and Donald Rock came in two years or three years ago and uh, I suppose gave everyone a bit of confidence. He spoke to players individually and, you know, boosted, boosted a lot of people up, like, you know, so it gave them confidence going forward. Uh, that was a major thing. And I suppose I kind of got my s and with my knee and stuff on track with Kenny Murphy. He's brilliant, you know, and I wasn't as... As I suppose it's different injuries and different things like that, you know, I found out what kind of worked for me. I suppose through the years, like, different things worked for me, and it mightn't necessarily be running myself into ground, but just being more smarter and doing different things, maybe bike work, swimming, etc. Um, what does a current week's training look like, and what's involved? Currently, what way I'm training is a gym. Yeah. Uh, so we're running probably two, three days a week. Um doing a lot of um, time trials, time running, uh, 5Ks or or um, even just tempo runs. And then we're doing our own S&C program as well. So we're doing like strength and condition, just kind of a mixture of stuff. We sometimes we do a, a hit session with um, on Zoom, just kind of as a group together. But uh, yeah, that's what we're trying to do at the moment anyway. And it's it's tough going on your own, but um, um, hopefully it's not, it, we're over the worst for nearly now. I think we're kind of on the better side of it now. Uh, looking towards championship. Is there any new pan new members that are after joining the panel? No, there's not any new members yet. I think that um, we're just sticking with the same group as um, minus a few players from last year, but um, we're sticking with the same group at the moment. And then I suppose when things open up and uh, when we get more of a foothold and we get back to pitches, I, there will be definitely girls given a chance. And more guys brought in on trial basis for the for the panel and uh, maybe trial games. So anyone that's kind of um like we 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 do have a small panel at the moment, so there definitely will be more people brought in. And I suppose they'll get a chance in a, in a in a game like that. I remember I was brought in 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 two thousand nine, and it was only three weeks before the All Ireland final, just to kind of make up numbers with a with um with the county team, just to kind of make fifteen v fifteens, and I. Uh, held my place in there since so um, I was delighted then so it's not just that you have been there at the start of the year it's you could get called in at any stage and that could be the start of the fire you know do we, um, do we need to start a petition to Miss Welsh for the week off for the All-Star trip <laughs> oh god yeah there was a lot there was a lot of big barn and steel in there the last time with the, with the tennis ring um, he was saying in fairness to me he gave me the time off no bother uh, I don't think I got much sleep after the last All Star trip, <laughs> but uh, Jesus, yeah, I'll have to do a lot of begging, begging for Miss Welsh. If you're listening in, Miss Welsh, will you please give me yeah. an answer? <laughs> well, with COVID, I think it, it's in Kerry this year. <laughs> well, I think it's next year, so it's every two years. So hopefully next year, then it'll seem to be lifted by then, and they're holding out. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> um, have, are you only doing? Um, like training with a plan or are you doing anything yourself individually? Uh, yeah, so I kind of also train, I suppose, with my knee and stuff like that. Like I do, I, sometimes I might do bike work. Sometimes I might do a more S&C kind of uh, strength work. When if it's at this time, um, this time of the year, I'm probably just trying to stay with the, like it's very intense our program is at the moment. So I'm trying to stay up with that. If it was kind of during championship, I do a lot of like swimming uh, bike work, extra stuff, just to, I suppose, keep on top of things and to put at least, at least amount of weight bearing on my knee and try to kind of mix it up with, do a bit of tennis last year, you name it, I, <laughs> I've tried a bit of kayak and whatever you, whatever you want. <laughs> um, is it hard to train around um, not hurting your knees too much or do you just find different ways around it? Yeah, I just find different ways around it. I suppose my um, my pain threshold has gone up a bit now. I wouldn't really feel as much uh, much pain, like something small mightn't hurt me as much because I think I'm just kind of nearly used to it. Um, so I would, there'd be times that, I suppose before my earlier career, I get would have got injured a lot, but thanks down to my S&C coach with Kenny Murphy and just looking after and knowing when it's, when it's right. Like if I have to do a 5K today and my knee was sore, and it might have been sore for the last couple of weeks. I'll just do a gym program or a bike session instead. And then I'm not injured then for the week after, whatever the case is. You know, I have to just be a bit more 
clever with. I used to feel guilty with it, but now I know I just do something alternative instead, not just do nothing, just do some alternative that wouldn't kind of aggravate it as much. Pauline Cunningham actually, um, she said to me, she put me aside one day and she just goes to me, look, you need to look after yourself. And uh, I should kill me now, but I remember she said that her knees were sore, but she was pretending that she was working late a couple of days because the train was gone. It was it was aggravating her knee. It was obviously soft ground. And she said, oh, I just told me I was training late. She goes, because I just have to look after myself. And I knew I wasn't training late. It was just to, or otherwise I wouldn't be able to play. I wouldn't be able to play, start. Like it wasn't her off and out, but it was just a, a way for her to be able to play for the rest of the year, you know. Have, um, have Little Woods given the guarantee that the old Neve Rocket collection will be up for Christmas? <laughs> I get some grief over this Little Woods thing. Jesus, like if anyone, and well, if Alex Reed is, Alex Reed is fellow, isn't it? He keeps calling me a pure and utter shaper. And uh, uh, since then, Miss Flynn is, keeps calling me a shaper. So uh, he's after giving me that nickname. Well, you, you, cause, like, you, well, I suppose you have been described as the Walford Anagiri. Now, <laughs> possibly just possibly just by me, but I did notice that she has six all stars. So you're going, you've a bit to catch up yet. Otherwise, you're going to end up on double RFM as opposed to RTE. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have a good bit to catch up on with her now. But um, no, I've uh, I guess I, I'm lucky enough. I suppose I do get a little bit good bit of stuff off Little Woods and um, good uh, stuff with Azuri actually this year as well. So. Um, when the championship opens up, get a little bit there. But I'm definitely not the Walford Anagiri, and I don't want that name to stick. I think Mr. Briggs is trying to get that name to stick. And if Mr. Connells goes along with it, then I think it's going to stick. But he's kind of sticking by me at the moment for, for the time being anyway. I could be called worse, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, look, I suppose, look, before Bevan finishes up there, I suppose, look, on a, on a serious note, I, for everyone watching and for everyone out there, like, I mean, I was lucky enough to teach Neve in school, coach her in school. She was a phenomenal student and phenomenal um, hurler. And she's now a phenomenal teacher. And I think that from everyone here in St. Declan's, like, we are incredibly lucky to have a role model you know, someone who is one of our own who has come back to work in our school and inspire the next generation of not just students, but Camogie players. So I just like to say on behalf of everyone and the future leaders and everyone, well done. We're very proud of you, Eve, and we're delighted. Absolutely thrilled for you. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. I'm delighted. Thanks to Miss Rocket for joining us. A huge well done from all in St. Declan's. I ask you again to hit that like and subscribe button. See you soon. On extra time.